Well, hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi, Heidi. Hi, <laughs> Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, we're into episode five um, today with Courtney. And uh, so I'm going to let him take it away. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, now, during the, uh, the, the beginning of the cellar parties, when the parties actually got going, um, that's when my mother left. Um, I think she, you know, <laughs> uh, it was a good time to get going. And um, she had kind of stuck around uh, unhappily, you know, until our kids were old enough to, to uh, take care of ourselves pretty much, which we'd been doing for a, quite a long time already. Um, she, you know, it, was, it wasn't a happy household between my parents because uh, my mother, um, a wonderful woman, and, um, and my dad's quite the gentleman, but he was a bit of a cad. So he had been, uh, he, you know, he had girlfriends. And um, one of the girlfriends, um, who was, you know, a, a beautiful and innocent person, uh, my dad and his best friend, Arthur, they're out, you know, cruising the town and they see this lovely young lady um, on, the side, on the sidewalk and, uh, and they go, well, you know, she is definitely, you know, outstanding. Um, we need to get to know this, this, this lady. So they, um, they make her acquaintance, pull over, invite her for, you know, coffee or something. And anyway, um, here's a picture of her. <laughs> Quite the babe. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but anyway, for those days, you know, that, that was, she was beautiful. And um, so uh, my dad, Max, Max and uh, his friend Arthur, you know, they kind of fostered this, this girl. Arthur had a big, beautiful uh, restaurant that was very successful. And um, so, uh, and, and of course my dad had uh, family and children. So, you know, she was enamored by both of these older, gracious and charming gentlemen. Um, and uh, essentially they sent her for elocution lessons and deportment and all of the stuff that, like in My Fair Lady, you know, to, uh, so that she had a, a genteel speaking voice, she had uh, poise and, um, uh, you know, all of the attributes of a lady. And, um, uh, so that uh, they could um, walk out with her and not be disgraced by her behavior. <laughs> Can you imagine, right? Anyway, you know, we don't have to deal with such stuff nowadays. We just like, hey, whatever. <laughs> but um, anyway, Sue, and, and she's a lovely girl, you know, and, and I, I met her when she was 15, I was 12. I was 12 years old. When, when my dad started, you know, um, canoodling. Seeing, canoodling with <laughs> Sue. Uh, and um, it, it would be my dad and myself and Sue. And he said, well, nothing happened. I mean, Courtney was with us, you know, who chaperoning us. I was like, you're right. He, he'd park me in a, in a, a pub, uh, you know, one of the gardens in the pub, you know, where uh, underage people could, could be. And um, I could have cider, uh, even though it's alcoholic. But, you know, my dad would bring out cider and then he'd just bring out jugs of beer and stuff and he'd just help himself. And um, anyway, uh, and then we'd go off on long country drives and see all these old uh, heritage homes, mansions and beautiful uh, gardens and, um, you know, a charming uh, cruise through the Kentish countryside. And things back then were still pretty quiet, you know. There was what no great industry, not a lot of traffic. Um, things were still uh, recovering from the war, even though it's, you know, it's going on, you know, it's quite a long time later now, you know, we're a dozen, 15 years later. Anyway, um, so um, my mother decides that we're old enough, she's unhappy, uh, you know, poor dear, and um, and she goes to London, and uh, next thing I know, she's modelling at Harrods. Harrods is, you know, one of the world's greatest uh, department stores. And I said, what are you modelling, mother? And she said, oh, you know, um, lingerie. I said, seriously? You're my mom. 
<laughs> but she was still, you know, very well put together uh, lady, and she was still a young lady. She was, you know, she was early thirties, looking like twenty, you know. Um, anyway, um, so my mother left. Within the week, my dad moved Sue in, and Sue now has she had married Arthur because you know she couldn't marry my dad, and uh, she has a child now. This is still a baby, Anna. You know. Anna's a lovely girl. And um, so they, you know, move into the house. And um, and then say, oh, just watch the ch watch the baby, would you, Courtney? We're, um, we're, we're, we're just off out for a little bit. And they go off pub crawling and dancing and stuff, you know. And I was like, yeah, you know, just stick a bottle in her mouth and shut the... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what did I know about babies? I only knew that, I, you know, they made noise. They needed feeding and, you know, heaven forbid they need changing. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, um, Anna and I, of course, became, you know, best of friends, you know, over the years and stuff like that. But I do remember, you know, as a young boy, uh, teenager, you know, looking after Anna, who I, you know, I was like, by then I was probably, well, anyway. Um, <laughs> so a um, big change up. Ruby, behave. She wants me to play. Anyway. <laughs> um, and so, as the, one of the things that came along, so my dad, um, he, had, he and Sue would, went up uh, to speculate on you know, a new residence, and they wanted to get out of, out of town uh, and change the scenery and change you know, all of their friends and everything, because now my dad's on the outs with Arthur because he you know, stole his wife. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Sorry about your luck, but <laughs> anyway, um, they my dad found this um, beautiful uh, cottage that was um, like a heritage home. Uh, it was a thatched cottage that was the original farmhouse uh, in this area, which became a town of Bourne End. But originally, it was just the farmhouse and all the outlying. Um, farmlands and the cottages that uh, went with with the farm and the farmhouse. And my dad, by now the farmhouse is just an isolated little uh, lot in the centre of this town, but it's the original lot. And it's called the White House because it's painted white. And um, so, um, and it's, you know, it's a bit of a ramble. It's kind of a, you know, a typical rancher. It's, it's two-storey. Bit sprawling, nice grounds, you know, beautiful old ancient fruit trees and all that stuff. But um, so he sold he, he sold the uh, beautiful house in Rochester, Hazeldean, and now I'm dispossessed. He and Sue move up to the new house. I'm living in the back of his shop, which he's kind of basically shutting down anyway. I've got a mattress in the back. And my sister had married Philip, who is one of my school chums, who I had, because uh, I was put in classes with boys, you know, three, four years older than me. Anyway, he, um, they had been married. They've been married 63 years now. And they've, oh got, they've got great grandchildren. Can you imagine? I mean, yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, where did the time go? Mm. I've got nothing to show for my time except some tie dyes. And she's got a big family, you know, and there, and she's like still the heart and soul of the family. It's just wonderful. She did, she did a great job with her life. My my d darling sister Jenny, who's a few years older than I am, and we were already always cl close. And she's uh, she she's done a wonderful thing with her life. You know, no great um, industry with with career or anything like that. It was about family, which we didn't really have as children. Anyway. Um, so uh, anyway, I, I, one of the things that happened up at uh, Bourne End, we, you know, my dad's uh, cottage, he made a deal of the century. This thing is a heritage place. And he said, well, I see that the, you know, the vandals have, you know, ripped the thatch roof up and, you know, destroyed this and that and the other. And he said, and it's just, you know, it's going to get ruined there, you know, and what, what are we going to do about it? I said, I have an offer. He said, the offer is you let me move in for nothing and I will put the place in order and we can um, negotiate, a, 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 you know, a modest uh, mortgage payment. And they were like, well, we're going to save one of our, you know, our the main 
house in our town and um, you know it's not really going to cost us anything it's just sitting there vacant uh, derelict so my dad got the White House and um, oh boy when he eventually sold it you know years later he got millions <laughs> he did so well I know, I know. and um, uh, but um, one of the things he became one of the act, uh, the chairman of the activities commission uh, uh, for the um, the uh, township of Bourne End in Buckinghamshire, and um, so he they're putting on this fete, which is like a fair, you know, where you you, you raise money for the for the township for the community centre. So I said, well, I propose to do a a, a booth if you like. Uh, I said I'll have a marquee. And it'll be like a like a, a an old cave or something, and I'm going to have a, a an old fashioned coffin in there, and I'm going to be, you know, Dracula telling fortunes, and I'll have the old fashioned, you know, uh, wing collar and tails, and you know, the whole rigmarole, and uh, I'll make myself up, up as Dracula. So, and I had a girlfriend that had this natural widow's peak, and she did, you know, dressed up in it. Uh, very authentic looking, actually. And Roger Moore, who was like uh, very famous back in those days, he was the second James Bond uh, actor after, um, uh, I think he was the second one anyway. But he was he was one of the, you know, one of the better ones. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, he opened the fate for us and uh, he came and checked out my, my, uh, situ my cave <laughs> in the marquee and I have this you know a real coffin with you know the padded satin lining and I'm all dressed up and I got the makeup on to you know and it's so hot in there I'm in this full evening dress and um evening costume and uh I'm sweating and the makeup's like <laughs> rolling and I'm like I look like you know my face is melting it's like <laughs> ghastly absolutely ghastly and um uh <laughs> so I, um, the fate started, Roger Moore came, comes in, he goes, yes, you look terrible. <laughs> and uh, I, I get, at least I got to say hello. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, so my girlfriend's like, she said, are you ready? She said, they're lined up here 40 deep, you know? There's, oh, God, you've, you've, got, you've got half the people lined up to come into you, you know, to, to see you. I said, to tell their fortunes? She said, well, whatever, you know. So anyway, I said, they're supposed to come in one at a time. Well, nobody would come in one at a time. They were coming in in twos, threes, fours, and uh, twos was the least. It was, you know, usually packs of them, and mostly kids, you know, but, you know, some, some adults. They wanted to see, you know, this, whatever this scene is with Dracula. Uh, I had no idea how ghastly I looked at, at this moment by then, you know. And um, they would come in, they'd be pushing each other ahead and they, you know, I'd just be lying there. <laughs> and then, um, you know, when they get up right up and they're looking down on me and I go, Kah! my eyes are open, they're all bloodshot, and red rimmed and stuff like this. And I go, uh, and then I start to raise myself up out. <laughs> and they would all run away. <laughs> and then they'd get in line, pay again, come back in. And there was a constant loop of, <laughs> of these of these kids um, that, you know, I never even, uh, toward, you know, within a few hours, you know, on their two, third, fourth time through, they'd stick it out long enough for me to actually look at them. And then they'd scream and run away. And, I, and then I said, I gotta take a break, you know, and I, look, I get a mirror and look, you know, to check myself out and I'm like, ah! <laughs> ghastly absolutely ghastly so anyway I went oh no wonder it's working <laughs> so um, <laughs> so uh, towards the end of the day and it's, you know I can't wait for dusk you know because I got to get out of this heat you know and the sun goes down then I can ah, I can come out because you know the sun's going down <laughs> sure enough when the sun went down it's glimmering down she said the sun's down and I was like I put on my cloak and I've got these frothing blood capsules and I carved my own teeth and they're really authentic looking. I could just, you know, <laughs> doesn't look right without the, uh, without them, but, <laughs> and um, the foaming blood capsules, you know, they're all like 
frothing up in my mouth. And I kind of, and I come out with a cloak up, you know, and walk out, out of, you know, the, of the marquee. And there's all these kids. It seems like, you know, there's 60 or 100 of them. And they're all in a big, you know, semi-circle waiting for me to come out when the sun went down. They knew the, uh, the fable, the uh, legend. And anyway, um, I come out and I go, you know, stop my way out. Ah! <laughs> Blood spraying out of my mouth and the teeth hanging out. <sighs> and, they, <laughs> and every step I went, they would, they would move backwards. Funny, it was hilarious. It was such a success. My dad said they were talking about this for years, five years after they would remember this. You remember when Dracula came here? Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, um, so now, you know, I've been working in London in Piccadilly. I'm driving a black Jaguar and I've got my three piece suits and, um, you know, things are going well, but where's the adventure? And I, I decided that um, I'm going to quit quantity surveying, you know, even though I was being uh, basically um, brought along as, you know, as a junior partner because I had the attributes, had the accent and the presentation and the smarts and all that stuff. Um, and it would have been a great <clears throat> uh, career. But I look at my um, the, the senior partner that had bought the firm and he had handpicked me, headhunted me actually, because we worked together in the first firm that I was in. And uh, he knew that I, he, he and I were the best people at figures, you know, totting figures and, you know, uh, at the job. Of, um, and so he had, he had handpicked me and got me from Ernest R. Babs and Sons in Piccadilly where I was working. And, um, but I, I looked at his life and I went, well, he's got the beautiful house in Tunbridge Wells and, uh, or Seven Oaks or, and he's got the boat and he's got the, um, 2.2 kids and the beautiful trophy wife and, you know, he's going on to the continent golfing, uh, you know, several times a year. And, um, I went, well, what pretty nice life, you know, he's doing very well, making really good money, but where's the adventure? So. It was like it was like a, a an epiphany. I, I didn't want a stable life of relative success. I wanted adventure, and um, so I determined. I gave my notice the next morning, and uh, made plans to uh, go to New York City and start a whole new life and seek my fortune. And thereby hangs a tale, a big tale. <laughs> That's awesome, Courtney. Thank you. This is so great to wrap up those early years. And right. I'm really excited to dive into the next part of your life. Are you excited? Uh, yeah, I'm still excited. We're excited. Are you excited? <laughs> if you are, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next Sunday. Thank you.